Good morning and welcome to the Gattaca Team Ministries morning service. We are pleased to have you here with us today and we'll be starting our service shortly. Good morning and welcome to the Gattaca Team online service. For the next three weeks, our service is going to be slightly different as they will be pre-recorded. This is so that the volunteers that help us with our live streaming will be able to have a well-deserved break. Services at St Mark's will continue without the live stream. And if you'd like to come and join us, please get in contact to reserve a seat. On the 4th of July, our plans are to move back over to St Stephen's Church and live streaming will resume. Once again, if you'd like to book seats at St Stephen's, please get in contact with us. Our prayer today is that God will meet with you, that he will bless you and that you will be able to worship him and meet with him. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, because I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, because I want to see you. I want to see you. My heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, cause I want to see you, I want to see you, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, cause I want to see you, I want to see you. Webster the Preacher Duck by Andrew McDonough Sunday morning the ducks awake, stretch their wings and leave the lake. Waddle through the reeds, waddle up the bank, waddle round the dog, under the tank. Waddle down the hill, waddle past the perch, 
waddle, 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 and into the church. And there he stands, that prince of pluck, the world's greatest preacher, Webster D. Duck. He clears his throat, shimmies his shins, takes a deep breath, and Webster begins. I'm the preacher duck, and the sermon I bring is praise the Lord who created the wing. Fish have fins to swim in the sea. Monkey has a tail to hang on the tree. But the Lord wants ducks high in the sky, so he gave us wings so we can fly. And all the ducks began to quack. We'll fly to the moon, then fly straight back. Now ducks, use your imagination. We're not bound by gravitation. We are made for aviation. It's a day for our migration. And all the ducks began to shout, Flying's in and waddling's out. I'm the preacher duck. When you leave your seat, you don't have to walk on those webbed feet. You have wings, you can fly. Stretch out your wings, reach for the sky. And all the ducks began to sing, Hallelujah, praise the King. Above the mountains we will glide, V formation side by side, over deserts, over seas, through the clouds, upon the breeze. Hallelujah, King of Kings, you made us ducks, you gave us wings. Then at the door the ducks all say, Thank you for your sermon today. Inspiration, food for thought, powerful message, so well taught. You made us laugh, you made us cry, you touched our hearts, you made us sigh. Well, must be off, can't stop and speak. Thank you, Rev. See you next week. Then all the ducks, wings tucked in, stretch out their legs and they begin. To waddle along down past the perch, waddle up the hill, away from church. Waddle round the dog, how their feet ache. Waddle, 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 back to the lake. Hospitality. I want to begin by saying the very heart of our practice and experience is a shared meal, Holy Communion. And when you look at the uh, life of Jesus in the Gospels, it seems that Jesus spent a lot of time on earth eating and drinking with people in their homes. Zacchaeus went and had tea with him. Mary and Martha had dinner. He was with... Uh, Matthew um, having dinner and he was criticised by the, the scribes and the Pharisees who said, why does he eat and drink with sinners? But Jesus also fed people outside. There was this marvellous occasion when he fed 5,000 or more. And St Paul reminds us, to extend hospitality to strangers, Romans 12, 13. He calls this a mark of the true Christian. When you think about it, it makes sense. And this is probably the heart of what I want to say this evening. If I give you a pair of shoes, I give you something to wear. If I give you a book, I give you something to read. But if I invite you for a meal, I'm saying, Above all, I want you to live, to thrive, to flourish, to grow. But all of the time, there's this emphasis on the stranger, the outsider, the marginalized. Luke 14, when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. Food banks, of course, are a realistic and wonderful response to the human need for nourishment. A prime example of the church getting it right. We need to feed people in order for them to live. 
So we can see we are to be rooted in hospitality. It's right at the heart of what we're all about. Incidentally, if you want the church to grow, Bishop Jack, some of you will know, and I, we've worked together for 30 years, and we had this strap line. If you want the church to grow, it's prayer and parties. Prayer and parties. Hospitality is the, the name of the game. But let me offer some further insights about hospitality. It's obviously necessary for human well-being. It protects the vulnerable. It offers generosity to those who can't return it. St. Chrysostom, one of the early church fathers, said it's a movement outwards. It's got to be proactive, seeing the need and responding to it. Be given to hospitality, perhaps the most important Christian ministry. It's not often viewed in that way, but I believe it to be uh, the key to a lot of our, um, our service to the world and our mission. But it's not a bribe tied to an advantage. This is what uh, in the Gospel of Luke we're reminded. You know, it's easy enough to offer meals to people who are well healed enough to respond to us, but much harder to bring in those who can't afford to return the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the hospitality. Hospitality reflects the generosity of God. It provides us place for the stranger, the outcast. And more than anything, it's a divine mystery in which the host receives as much, if not more, than the guest. In a word, human hospitality reenacts God's hospitality. I believe we are, this, some people might be offended by this, we are closer to the mind and heart of Jesus when we give someone a meal than we are when we preach at them. And remember, a pizza and a beer is as good as a caviar and champagne. You don't have to be well off to do it. All of this, of course, is symbolized in the Eucharist. Jesus, the bread of life. A shared meal is the human activity most closely linked to the presence of God. I want you to live, you're shouting, you're saying. Some people, me included, call this the holiness of hospitality. It's a holy gift. But please note the emphasis on the stranger, the outsider, those in the margins, the sinners, according to the Gospels, of the sinners, of the mar people in the margins of human society. Hospitality becomes, for the Christian community, the way of being, the sacrament of God's love. And it's linked closely to friendship. I have believed most of my ministry, and I've been ordained now for 50 odd years, that friendship and hospitality are the two building blocks of the kingdom of God. Early on in my Christian life, I was attracted to the liminality of Jesus, the the fact that he was on the threshold, in the margins, he was the door between the inside and the outside. That's where he loved to be. And sometimes when I'm in a cathedral and I see all that's going on and enjoying it and being part of it, I sometimes think to myself, if Jesus were here, would he be sitting near the altar or would he be serving tea? I think that's where he would be actually. At its simplest, hospitality, the giving of meals and friendship is, is at the heart of the Christian gospel. Now hear this, please. This is what I want to say. By this, we say, I want you to live. I want you to flourish. I want to nourish you. I want you to grow. But when we're talking about the church growing, it's worth looking again, and we've been doing this uh, over the Pentecost period, at the way the Acts of the Apostles develops. Acts 1 begins with the new Christians gathered together out of fear 
no doubt. But when they were gathered together, they devoted themselves to prayer. Led by the Holy Spirit, they began to pray. And it was in this context that the outpouring of the Holy Spirit occurred with all of the gifts and the um, graces that God wanted to give to the church. But it's always fascinated me that the culmination of that passage comes at the end of Acts 2. When the Holy Spirit had fallen upon them and they were all filled and transformed by the mighty power of God, it tells us they broke bread in their homes. They ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. You see, the Holy Spirit begins with prayer and he leads us to end with a meal. And you know what? The staggering truth, the extraordinary truth is, without even trying, the church began to grow. Day by day, it says, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. So I want to uh, elevate the ministry of hospitality as being perhaps the primary ministry of the Christian church based in the Eucharist, uh, observed, practiced by Jesus and his earthly life. And at our best, that's what we do. We offer hospitality to the stranger, the people outside. So when you're talking about church growth and you want to see more and more people become Christians, start with prayer. This is Acts 2, Acts 1 and 2. Start with prayer, devote yourselves to prayer. Then be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then eat and drink in one another's homes, being generous, staggeringly generous with your possessions, with your home, with your gifts. And it says, and I believe it, the Lord will add to our number those who are being saved. Well, that's all I need to say. But remember, when we give something, when we give someone a meal, we're saying, I want you to live. I want you to flourish. I want you to grow. I want you to be nurtured. Amen. Oh
Let us pray. Knowing that God hears our prayers, let us share our concerns with him for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for all in lay and ordained ministry as they labour for the growth of your kingdom on earth. Keep them strong in faith. Provide them with the energy and resources they need and inspire them daily with your love. Please respond with, you are our strength. Lord, you are our hope. You are our strength. We pray for all meetings, conventions and conferences, for all policy making and planning. May delicate negotiations be sensitively led and painful decisions bravely and wisely taken. Lord, you are our hope. You are our strength. We pray for those we have upset or angered, for those who have upset or angered us. We pray for those who worry us and those we love but seldom manage to see. Lord, you are our hope. You are our strength. We pray for those who are far from home and those for whom it is too dangerous to return home. We pray for the lonely, the unhappy, those in pain and those convalescing. Lord, you are our hope. You are our strength. We remember those who have come to the end of their earthly life and those whose lives feel bleak and empty without them. We pray for mercy and peace and comfort. Lord, you are our hope. You are our strength. Thank you, Lord, for being there beside us through all the dark and rocky places in our lives. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before we have our final blessing, we're going to sing our final song, which is Strength Will Rise.
So we hope that you've really enjoyed today's service and we pray that God has spoken to you personally today. Um, and we also pray that as you go into the week that you take what you've heard um, and that as it's been said today that you will um, share God with all that you meet. So our final blessing. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us his peace. Amen. So go in peace to love and save the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. Cause you're a good, good father.